see what this baby's got inside it. Hey, what's up, guys? Jeff Matt to Intel here. Mark, Mark, ew. Who suck you off, Bill? Oh, Josh, I hear, I hear screaming. Oh, no! It's gone. The controller's gone. Look at that. You look fucking fantastic. Welcome to Haptic HQ. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Hapticast, episode number 77. My name is Josh Toll, and I'm joined by my good friend, as always, Brett Roberts. Brett. We're back. We are back. After a, a brief hiatus that was advertised that we told everybody about, so I don't want to hear about it. Live from Haptic HQ. Merry Christmas. We're here. It's good to be back. It's mm -hmm. going to be back for a nice live, live Tuesday podcast. Yeah, I want you to know, oops, I want you to know that immediately as soon as we started recording this and we were live, I now have to poop. I want you to know that. The boys are back in town and my, uh, my colon is, that's right. That's right. So. Well, I took care of that before we started. Yeah. Um, Shout out to uh, Frankly and Christian in the chat. Welcome back. Oh. Good to see you guys. Sucks off. Uh, so, first of all, Brett. Yep. For our hiatus, we had unscripted going. Yeah. We had a little unscripted going. Yeah. Tell the people what that is. Yeah, so basically while we were gone, we thought, you know, since you were incapacitated, you weren't able to, to do any podcasts, we thought, well... What if we recorded a bunch of audio only podcasts beforehand and we released them throughout the month? Now we were off a couple of weeks at the end there, but for the most part, uh, we had some good content coming out. If you haven't checked those out, they are up on our YouTube channel. It's Hapticast Unscripted. It's a completely different show from this. It's a lot less news based. Uh, it's more just conversation based, us having fun, making jokes, uh, more of a comedic podcast. Uh, there still is some game stuff in there. There still is some movie stuff in there, entertainment stuff. But uh, it's a lot, a lot different than this. It's it's unscripted. There is no script. There's no rundown like we have here. Uh, it's it's a completely different format. So if you haven't listened to that, it's available on YouTube. Oh. The first three episodes, and mm -hmm. also on all podcast platforms. Moving forward, after uh, actually starting this week, unscripted is going to be audio only. We're only going to put a little snippet on YouTube of it, a little preview. Mm -hmm. and you're going to have to go over to the audio podcast platforms in order to listen to the whole thing. Right. And of course, regular Hapticast, what you're listening to right now, this is also going to be uploaded to those same podcast services. So you can listen to this later uh, and you can listen to Unscripted later. It's going to be a good time. Basically, we're opening up the floodgates for our podcast listeners because we are the oh number God. 17 podcast in gaming on the Apple podcast charts in the United Arab Emirates. So a little caveat there, but it's true. We are number 17 uh, on the United Arab we, Emirates Apple podcast charts. We need it on a t-shirt. That's not a bad idea. We need it on a t-shirt. What's up, Yuki? Shout out to Yuki in the chat. Uh, we need it on a t-shirt. That's right. We need to slap it all over all of our branding and hope that we never ever slip. And you know what we could well, do? It could be we, we could literally have a huge banner, right? Or a huge t-shirt. Number 17 gaming podcast in the world. Really tiny asterisk. font. Asterisk in the United Arab Emirates. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> and then even tinier asterisks. Responsible for committing terrible atrocities against humankind. <laughs> Yikes. I'm just uh, speaking, I'm just telling you like it is. Speaking of of that possible merch. We do have a merch store. If you guys are unfamiliar with that, Josh, would you be able to show the people what they're, what they're missing out on? Bro. I already got it fucking queued up for you. There you go. You think this you is already got you, it. You think this is my first rodeo? I know it's what we got on there. Listen, I uh, designed some new merch for everybody. We, uh, you know, we're the slick boys. Okay. Me and Josh were the slick boys. So we thought, what way could we commemorate you, the viewers, the fans, right? Well, guess what? We're the Slick Boys. Together, we are the cult of Slick. 
So right now, brand new on our merch store, we have the Cult of Slick t-shirts, including an exclusive navy and yellow colorway, uh, which is it's available right now. Go check it out. Uh, and wasn't there something else, too? There's the regular Cult of Slick shirt, and then I mean we have our, ah, yes. our we, ha- we have our that's awesome dude shirt and our and our Slick Boys stuff up there as that's well. That's right, the Slick Boys collection, if you will. So yeah, so check that out. Um, yeah, but back to back to unscripted, right? Real, real quick, the whole reason we really brought it up is so that the this last episode of unscripted, I mean we talk about a lot of things, but serves as the the fill in the 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 dl the the information if you want about right. where we were the last month and i think we have a pretty interesting conversation uh about I think so too. that so you know be on the lookout for that on thursday right right yeah so as as you were saying basically some people know wh- why we took a little month of, of absence on our channel and on podcast platforms but we really get into the meat and potatoes of why we were gone. I do a little pseudo interview, if you will, with Josh talking about the show that he recently directed. So if you're into stage shows, if you're into musicals, if you're in a Broadway, or even if you're just into Josh, uh, it's a great, great conversation that we have on top of many other things, including us having to go to the bathroom halfway through again. Dude, um, like clockwork. Yeah. A clockwork brown. Yeah. Maybe it's the brown note. Maybe there's just... While we're recording these podcasts, the brown note is just being transmitted. Yeah. Because I have to shit right now, like I said. Yeah. I'm okay. I already so, did that. But... That's all right. Eventually, it'll go away. I'm, I'm, known, I'm known for my iron stomach. Quite literally, yeah. So. But anyway, so we did that. We, had, we talked about merch. Uh, topic rundown. We got the Abysmal Chronicles for you guys today. We have, honestly, one of the most abysmal stories I've heard in my entire life. Uh, in there at the top about Diablo Immortal. I'm excited to talk about that. You also have AEW, a couple other little things in there. Main topics, Dead Island 2, re-reveal, obviously, as the title suggests. Sony saying they believe Xbox owning Call of Duty would quote-unquote influence users' console choice. Uh, Some really interesting insights in there. And then Indie Intel this week, something a little bit different, but I think it counts. Silent Hills being remade in Dreams, and it looks slick. So... That's what we got. That's what we're doing. Let's get into our media consumption update. Brett, you want to start or do you want me to start? I feel like you have way more, and I feel like I should just start. I have a lot because yeah. it's been a month. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to quickly go through mine, and then you can go through yours. Okay. For, first of all, TV and anime, The Boys. Um, I still have one episode left. The end of the season's really kind of falling off the rails for me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like the the second to last episode, honestly, not that it was bad, but it was so not at the level of where Hero Gasm was the previous episode, right? That it makes me feel like I don't really care about when I get to the last episode of the season. Interesting. So I found the last episode to be the weakest episode of the season. Yeah. Of the boys. Yeah, and maybe I'm just psyching myself out, but I just I, I don't I don't know. I have other things right now that are drawing my attention more than sitting down for an hour and watching that last episode. Right. Uh, then, of course, uh, excuse me, Better Call Saul. The third to last episode of the season aired last night. I heard some good things. I watched it live. Uh, it's incredible. Better Call Saul, I think, as I mentioned to you off camera, as good as Breaking Bad, in my opinion. Right. Uh, they somehow managed to, I mean, we'll see how they stick the landing with the last two episodes, but all signs are pointing to absolute slickness. And there's something, I mean, the show has been great for a long time, but these last few seasons have taken it from great to incredible, the way that Breaking Bad was. And this right. last episode takes it from incredible to unparalleled in TV again, like Breaking Bad was, in my opinion. Wow. And they somehow manage to make... Breaking Bad, even better, even better with Better Call Saul. It wow. it does nothing but add to that world and that story. All through the lens of this single singular character. So that's amazing. It is quite literally amazing. So uh, suck that show off. Then finally, I'm finally watching the last season of Attack on Titan. No, no spoilers for anyone out there. 
Uh, I'm nearing, I am think on episode 13. I think I'm episode 13 or 14. So I'm nearing the halfway point. You still have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Uh, quite frankly, says, what's being sucked off? I'm sucking off Better Call Saul, and now I'm sucking off Attack on Titan. Um, yeah, Attack on Titan is quite literally slick. Um, yeah, they really I, fucking kicked it in the high gear, man, with season four. From the get-go of this season, I, I, I don't know what I was expecting, but what I got and what we're getting is way more insane than I thought it would ever be. And and what I what I really like about Attack on Titan is specifically with this season, but also in the previous season, season three, they really have been leaning into some of the political stuff, like political thriller almost type stuff. Right. But it's done in a way that is so anime and right. over the top. It's so slick. I don't know how else to describe it. It's like Game of Thrones maybe isn't the best comparison. It's like House of Cards, almost, in some ways, with the level of political stakes right. that are being presented. And they execute them so well, and then there's there's just some fucking slick moments, man, that just, I, I, I mean, had me fucking standing and cheering. They literally make you play both sides by season four. Yeah. Where, you know, we, we saw in season one of Attack on Titan where the Titans attack... And Aaron's home world is destroyed, and he wants nothing but revenge. Now we're seeing the other side of the coin in season four. Why did they do it? And maybe they get attacked too now, and you see that other side, right? Right. So there's some parallels. I agree. It's the political nature of it is fucking insane, and it gets even crazier with the politics, my man. So just hold tight, sit, sit your butt down, and uh, strap in. Uh, I I'm, I'm strapped in and I'm strapped on. Yuki says kind of like Ghost in the Shell almost. Yes. I'm less... I've only seen Ghost in the Shell once. So I'm not as familiar yeah, me too. with it. Um, and it's been a while. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I love Attack... I'm loving Attack on Titan. It took me way too long to watch it. I'm glad I don't have to wait, though. And I can just... Yeah. I'm just plowing through. Right. Um, This is... So they... It says that this is the final season. But is there... Is there not a confirmed continuation after this, too? It's, yeah, season four, part three and four, I believe. Yeah. So they're just the saying the final season, but it's, you know, a prolonged... Because there's 28 episodes. Yeah, there's a part one and a part two of already out. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, I'll, ridiculous. I mean, I'm strapped in, so we'll see. Um, and then games, uh, play, we played a little bit of multiverses, which is, um, you know, fun. It's fine. Um, it's nothing crazy. Uh, and then Stray, which I am almost platinumed. I started... That game. Yeah, I, I started... Uh, you have to have a speed run for the platinum, which is actually it's a really easy speed run. You can do it in like 90 minutes. Um, I think they give you two hours. Like the trophies, like complete it in under two hours. You can complete it in ninety minutes pretty easily. About halfway through that, um, Stray's nice. Stray was a nice little little palate cleanser, little return to gaming for me. Um, I uh, I enjoyed it. I I recommend it. Uh, it's really short. You know, I did it in four hours the first playthrough, and that is with getting all the collectibles and all that crap. Um, so it's a nice little game. It's, I enjoy it. The setting's cool. The story's interesting. And you're playing as a fucking cat. So, you know. Hashtag cute, dude. So I don't know what else you could want from a video game. But I yeah. recommend it. Cute little game. Anyway, Brett, let's uh let's hop into your fucking list here, my boy. Yeah, I have a lot. And most of it is me wanting to mention stuff to you since it's been a month since we've kind of talked about movies and stuff. I kind of just wanted to tell you what I've seen to catch you up and what you need to watch. Okay. So number one, I went and saw Nope, Jordan Peele's newest film. Uh, this movie's being compared to Jaws. Hmm. I agree. Hmm. It's about aliens. That's all I'll say. You can get that from the trailer. Yeah. Uh, but it's very much like Jaws. So, okay. Good film. All right. Phantom of the Paradise is a Phantom of the Opera esque film. Uh, from the seventies, I believe. Maybe the eighty? No, seventies, right? Good. Yeah, film. late seventies. Good film. 
Uh, I also watched Phantom of the Opera from 2004, mainly because I went and saw Josh's uh, show, which we talk about in this Thursday's episode of Hapticast Unscripted. So go check that out on podcast platforms. Uh, then I watched Sleepaway Camp 2. Sleepaway Camp 2 is garbage. Bad, not a good movie. Uh, poop. Don't watch that film. Sleepaway Camp 1 has one of the best endings in a horror movie I've ever seen in my life. And it's agree. Honestly- seared into my brain how Dude, fucking it's, disturbing it's it was. disturbing yeah uh next incantation is a new horror film from netflix it is being compared to uh asian horror film neroi the curse oh. i would say it's very similar to that and i would say that it is really good i really like what, what's it called incantation Okay. Uh, and that is on Netflix, and it is very good, very meta, and I liked it a lot. Uh, the Black Phone, written mm. by Stephen King's son. Uh, I did not like this film at all. People on online are literally sucking it dry. I did not like this movie at all. Hmm. I thought it sucked. I was looking forward um, to it. It was very disappointing. People said Ethan Hawke was fantastic in it. He's barely in it. Uh, there's they don't explain anyone's motivations, why anything's happening. All the characters are stupid. There's random pl- like there's random like tropes thrown in there just for the sake of being there. I honestly felt like I was watching them set up a franchise like um, Insidious or The Conjuring uh, with some of the things they were throwing in there. I was like, oh, this is definitely going to be like a big franchise now that they're going to try to milk. Uh, it felt like it was setting something up. Um, What else? Men. I saw, I think it's Alex Garland, right? Men. Mm-hmm. That movie is disturbing. Uh, the ending is one of the craziest things I've ever seen ever with my own two eyes. If you want to see really? something insane, yeah. If you want to see something very disturbing and insane, watch Men. Um, is that out yet? An... Men? Yeah. yeah. On VOD? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's out. It's on all streaming platforms if you catch my drift. I, that, I, I do. That's um, That's what my question was. It is what not about, really scary, but no, but it's well. Uh, what about Black Phone? Oh yeah, that's out too. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Um, Mad God is a stop motion film that's that was made like for fifteen yeah. years. That took I the really guy to want. Make it. I really want to see this. Mad God was mad good. Um, <laughs> it was pretty good. However, we did a double feature. Some of our friends and we watched Mad God. And another stop motion film called Junkhead. Is that also by Phil Tippett? Or no? no. Okay. No, I believe this one is uh, Japanese. Takahide Hori? Yes. Wow, I'm seeing high marks on Letterbox from you guys for this. Junkhead? High marks. Yeah, Junkhead was amazing. So there's two. There's Junkhead and there's Junkhead 1. I forget which one's... The, the, you want to watch the longer one. Because the one oh. is just... A short film. This one's 101 minutes. What's the other one? Uh, I don't know. I don't actually even see it okay. on Letterboxd. It's on there. So one's a short film and one is a movie. Mm-hmm. And we didn't realize this. We thought that like the short film was adapted and then turned into a movie. He literally like director's cuts that shit and makes it a full movie. So we kind of watched the same movie twice in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, a short version of it and then a long version of it. Is this also on all streaming services? Uh, it's on the ones that matter. And the one, the other, the one that we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Everything that I mentioned is is on all streaming services. Even nope. Drift. No. I was gonna nope. say I don't think that that was that would be available no. yet. Um, I actually found Junkhead on the um, damn, what's it called? There's like a website that like houses files for um, like Mediafire. No, like for the sake of um. Uh, fucking keeping it alive. So it, what's the word I'm looking for? Conservation. Yeah. There was like a media conservation website called like the Internet Media Database or something like that. And they put old like commercials and they put old movies and stuff like that. And this movie's not even that old, but it was the only place online I could find this film. Wow. Junkhead is what right. I'm referring to. Okay. So Junkhead's a big, a big uh, recommendation. Games, ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls, I got my Steam Deck, and you can see me and Josh right there in the reflection. Um, I got my Steam Deck. I love it. 
I have literally installed so much garbage on it. It's not even funny. I'm playing Epic Game Store games on my Steam Deck. I'm playing GameCube. I'm playing Switch. I'm playing Wii. I'm playing Wii U. I'm playing Game Boy Advance. I, I ain't playing nothing because all I'm doing is downloading shit on my Steam Deck. That is partially correct. I've barely played it because I've been installing so much. But the games that I have played, Aperture Desk Job, which is a oh, cool I also played that. Game. Should have listed that. I also played that. Very cool, but basic. Not really much of a game, but cool for like lore for the Portal universe. Yeah, for sure. I also played a little game called A Short Hike. It's an indie game. This I played on the Steam Deck. Mm -hmm. This game is very cute, very short, very charming. Uh, the dialogue's very quippy and nice. Uh, and the whole the whole point is you're this little penguin bird thing. You're a little bird, and you're trying to get to the top of a mountain. And you go on a little hike, and you collect items, and you upgrade. And it's mm -hmm. very short and very good. I recommend it. Yeah. It's very chill if you want a chill little adventure. Christian says he needs a video of, of uh, shit when you get a chance in the future. I need a video of shit. ROMs and shit. What, like a tutorial? Yeah, I can... I'm going to hook you up, brother. Yeah. Uh, my, just as a little anecdote, side note, my Steam Deck will be here literally tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Do we talk about that on... Uh, I don't on, think so. Do we? On Unscripted? I don't know. I thought mm -hmm. we did. You literally Maybe almost got screwed, but... Oh, yeah, well, you're right. We did talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. If you, so if you're interested in my Steam Deck, Steam Deck journey, make sure you listen to Unscripted on Thursday, because that's in there, Basically, too. Basically, anytime we have, like, a story that's, like, personal story... We're going to fucking send you to the fucking podcast service because we're going to send you to the shadow realm. We're just going to chill every time now. We don't ever talk about anything. Uh, it's all on that podcast. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. This is this is news and gaming focused. I mean, right? Steam Deck is, but there's a personal side of that story. And listen, all I'm going to tell you is that Gaben literally gargled my cock. That's it. That's all there is to it. And if you want to know more about it, then you'll listen to Unscripted on Thursday. He gargled it and then he said... Hey man, move to New Zealand with me. Mm -hmm. And you said, but there's snakes and spiders there. And you said, and he said, no, dude, that's Australia. You're fucking stupid. Yeah, and then I moved into his house and I had sex with him. All right. Uh, and then let's wrap this up quickly. Uh, TV and anime, Attack on Titan. I finished that while you were directing your show. Um, it's slick. It's the reason I told you to watch it. It's good. Uh, I started watching an anime called Sub. Sabiqui Bisco. Uh, it's about a world that uh, like a, a fucking nuke goes off in the middle of Tokyo, and yeah. it's like a it's like a mushroom nuke, and like the whole world is like a desert. And this character has these mushrooms that he shoots out of a bow and arrow, and they grow. And he's a terrorist. I don't I don't really know what's going on, but it's called Sabiqui Bisco, and uh, I liked it so much from what I've seen. And I've also watched an anime completely. Finished it. It's called Tomodachi Game. This one mm. is about uh, a group of friends that get sucked into a game, almost like a, uh, a squid game type of deal. Mm -hmm. But the, the point is, one of them is a traitor and has a lot of debt. And he sucked all of his friends into this game where they all split that debt. And the goal is to lower that debt by competing in these games. Uh, but the thing is, nobody knows how much debt each other have because they're on these little necklaces and you can't look at other people's necklaces. Otherwise, your debt goes up. So it's a game. It's almost like uh, One Night Ultimate Werewolf or like Resistance, Josh, where they're like uh, light yagami each other and one-upping each other. And they all think each other is the uh, traitor. Yeah, makes sense. Pretty good, except cool. my only complaint with it is like they kind of give away who the traitor is really quick. Mm. And then it turns into a different type of show. Um, it almost reminds me of Gantz. Remember how in Gantz... They go into Gantz and then they go home and then they mm. all come back to Gantz over and yeah. over again. That's how this show goes, where I thought the whole show was going to be them playing this game for like the whole season or whatever. And they finish their game and then end up going back into the game at one point. Um, so just like Squid Game. Yeah, just like Squid Game. So that one's called Tomodachi Game, which means friend game. And it's pretty good. All right. Well, that's all I got for you. All right. So we are going to talk about all those things that we talked about at the top of the show. We're going to talk about new games that are coming out. We're going to talk about Diablo Immortal. We're going to talk about Call of Duty uh, possibly being an Xbox exclusive, losing, uh, you know, PlayStation players. Call of Duty losing 50 million players in one year. Uh, Pokemon stuff. So tune in. Don't go anywhere. Josh, please roll our show intro.
So if you're new to the show, everyone, uh, this is the Abysmal Chronicles. This is the part of our show where we give some stories that are just a little bit too abysmal to make it as main topics for the show. They're quick hitters. They're nice, easy, digestible. <clears throat> Throw them in, you eat them. Uh, they're good. So let's start off with some video game releases for this week. Uh, first off, we have the Gallery. It's coming out for PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch on August 1st. Very original name. Uh, totally, totally excited for the Gallery. Don't know if it's a shooting gallery or if it's an art gallery, um, but it's coming out. Frogun is coming out for PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch on August 2nd. South of the Circle is coming out for PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, Switch on August 3rd. Hard West 2 uh, is coming out for PC on August 4th. I didn't even know there was a Hard West 1. Turbo Golf Racing. Uh, these sound fake. This is this is it. This is what's on the docket. I don't know what to tell you. These don't sound like real games. They you are. Frog Gun? Frog Gun, dude. Frog Gun. Yeah, it's a, it's a Frog Gun. Hard West 2 and Hard Turbo Breasts 2, yeah. And Turbo Golf Racing. That's right. Turbo Golf Racing comes out for PC, Xbox Series X and S, and Xbox One on August 4th. Thymesia comes out for PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, and X, S, and X, August 9th. And then finally, this one's definitely real because I've seen this one. Two Point Campus is coming out for PC, PS5, Xbox Series S, and X, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch on August 9th. That's right, quite frankly. Hard breasts, too. Hard breasts. All right, All right, let's take it to the stories, Josh. Okay, I want you to know this story is so abysmal. And this is the true epitome of, first of all, first world problems, little crybaby bitches, and fucking microtransactions run amok. So, have at it. Okay, for the record, I did not read this one because Josh wanted me to wait and read it live on air. So, I'm going to be processing it as I'm reading it. Diablo Immortal player says he's lost access to PvP games after spending $100,000 on microtransactions. This is coming from VGC. Uh, content creator JT is all business. JT is all business. <laughs> JT is all business posted a YouTube video about his predicament, which he said he's been facing for a month and a half. During that time, he said he's probably spent 48 to 72 hours attempting to queue for a Battlegrounds PvP game without success, which is reportedly because of his unrivaled matchmaking rating. Oh boy, I see where this is going. Following Diablo Immortal's June 2nd release, JT is all business said he sunk a significant amount of money into the game and ended up with a character so powerful that he has a Battlegrounds record of somewhere between 300 and 450 victories and just three losses. By the way, a significant amount of money, $100,000, which is fucking insane. He said he first contacted Blizzard about the issue over a month ago via live chat, and he was directed to make a forum post about it, which he did. Is that up? Uh, I'm going to pull it up right now. Okay. And uh, said, and also, the, the forum post was not responded to, which I don't know if I included. Wow. But, yeah. Uh, he's quoted as saying, so now I'm in a situation where I've spent a considerable amount of money, around $100,000 on this game, and I have a character that has not been able to do the thing that I like doing most in this game, which is Battlegrounds, he said. JT is all business, said the issue is impacting his ability to make money from the game as a content creator, and that he is considering consulting a lawyer after failing to get an adequate response from Blizzard. Quote, my matchmaking record is now so high that I literally can't get a battleground. So my question now is, do I just not do anything about this? Or should I hire a lawyer and refund this account and see what happens? Diablo Immortal has received strong criticism, obviously, for its handling of microtransactions, with one report claiming it would cost players up to $110,000 to fully upgrade a character. So... <laughs> But there's a lot to unpack there. But first yeah. of all, he claims it's impacting his ability to make money. I, I see you, Yuki. Thank you. Um, Bye. I have, I have a slight issue with that. 
This man has 153,000 subscribers on YouTube. Not right. bad, you would think, right? But let's go into let's go into the actual nit nitty gritty here, right? Okay, we're doing some detective work. He averages. Let me pull this up so everybody can see it. So I won't be able to see. So it. he has 153,000 subscribers. Every video, though, his most recent one <clears throat> got 10,000 views. And this is in regards to the topic that you're talking about. But you look yeah. behind that. Each video has 3,000 views, 7,000 views. The only videos that he has that he probably makes any money on, actually, is the ones talking about this topic. Should I refund $100,000 on Diablo Immortal? 138,000 views. But then the previous video, 3,000 views, 6,000 views, 6,000 views, 6,000 views, 5,000 views, 7,000 views. And these so, were probably boosted by the other videos, too. Yeah. World's first max account on Diablo Immortal, 30,000 views. But then the previous video, 11,000 views, 3,000 views, 8,000 views. So... This guy's oh. a fucking schmuck. There's also the... He could be streaming, Josh. Okay. All right. Fair point. Let's see. What, what's he got on Twitch? I don't want to start a beef with JTiz. JTiz all of that. He's literally streaming right now, and he has 500 people watching him. Hmm. I see your point, though. It's not... It doesn't seem as if it's impacting his monetary gain. I don't think that what I'm saying is I don't think he's large enough to make a significant chunk of change right. from this is my point. But he has enough money to buy a uh, hundred thousand dollars. Clearly. In the album. I'm just I'm just saying. You're averaging five hundred viewers on Twitch and I mean the the game's been out for two months and you're hundred thousand four to ten thousand average views on your youtube videos you're not making a ton of money on that you're just not i'm sick to my stomach over you're just not so first of all you're spending a hundred thousand dollars on microtransactions for a game right and you can't get matchmaked and you right. only have three losses guess what pal that's your fault is that you to win it absolutely is, and that's the other part of the problem, is that that's so abysmal that you were even able to do that in the first place for a video game. I don't care what it is. You're bad for doing it, Blizzard's bad for making it, all around you're all bad, and go away, because you sound like a little crybaby bitch. JTiz all that, I think you should uh, hire a lawyer, dude. Yeah, please. Josh. Me? No, not me. Slander. No, I go ahead. Sue Blizzard. I would love to watch that happen. I really would. I really, truly would like to see that happen. On a free-to-play game where you did a bunch of microtransactions to pay to win and you can't get into a match, you're really going to claim, because I'm assuming this is what your claim would be, right? Is that Blizzard impacted your ability to make money. Bro. Your channel doesn't get enough views to make enough money for it to matter. There's no way that you could prove that in court. Can't happen. Won't be done. This is he is literally quite literally doing a cash grab for all this. That's awesome, dude. So interesting. Well, thank you for sharing the story. Um, it makes me want to rip my eyeballs out. The fact that someone can even spend that much money in a game is abysmal, and he's abysmal, and um, you're abysmal, and I'm abysmal. So. Anyway, uh, any other thoughts on that? Not a huge fan of uh, the fact that he could literally buy himself to that level. So he literally he literally bought himself so much that he can't play the game. Right, because no, who else is spending $110,000 to fully upgrade their character? Right. Nobody. And he's acting like it's because he's good. Right, you're not good. You bought it. So congratulations. Reap what you sow, pal. As they say, sad. Moving on, uh, this is also a sad story. Call of Duty franchise has uh, lost over 50 million players in one year. <coughs> bye you bye. You know, 50 million is a lot of players. That is uh, a lot coming, of people. This is coming from True Trophies. Call of Duty has had a record <coughs> player count loss, losing over 50 million players <coughs> since last year. The yeah, Activision Blizzard franchise is set to pause development on a 2023 COD after the release of Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. 
The Call of Duty series has hit a three-year low in player engagement this quarter, with the Activision financials revealing that COD has sunk to below 100 million players over the last year and has lost 50 million players in the process. This should be resolved with the highly anticipated Modern Warfare 2 release alongside Warzone 2 later this year on October 28th. Uh, They are quoted as saying, across the Call of Duty ecosystem, the teams are well positioned to support these launches with substantial live operations, while also continuing development of new premium content planned for 2023 and beyond. It was going to happen, dude. It was bound to happen. I mean... It is bound to happen. I think that they're going to bounce back and be fine, like quite literally, like they say, and they're going to ride on the coattails of the Modern Warfare name, right? right? Uh, for this year, at least. But I mean, it, it, you're. I think you are actually finally starting to see fatigue of the franchise, right? I think you are finally starting to see that, because I don't think Vanguard was the worst Call of Duty title by far. But I think it was certainly the worst performing, obviously, right? right. So I think you're going to start to see that now. Yeah, I, th- I think that it's it's interesting because with these sports games that are annualized, there really isn't much different from each game, right? Mm-hmm. But with these Call of Duty games, they are so different. So when they had these annualized Call of Duty, I mean, listen, not completely different, but like they were new games. They weren't the same game with the same characters, right? So it's interesting that, you know, we don't want these annualized sports games, but for years we were buying these annualized Call of Duty games that people were only playing for a year and then they were moving on to another game. Right. It's, just, it's, it's an interesting thing to consider and an interesting thing to look at, that the lifespan of a Call of Duty game besides Warzone is, it used to be one year. Right. Um, so maybe people got sick of that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really care about Call of Duty anymore, to be honest with you. I it it is what it is. I, I I didn't buy Vanguard. Um yeah. Unfortunately, I probably will buy <laughs> Modern Warfare 2 because I want to play the campaign. Um but, you know, I mean it is what it is. I don't think I don't think Call of Duty is as quite as big of a juggernaut as it once was. Um and I think that's just going to continue to trend downward. Um but, I mean, who knows? I could be wrong. We're going to continue talking about this in a different context for one of our main topics, so I'll save the rest of it for there. But I, I truly... I just... I don't think it's as big as it once was, and I think it'll just continue to trend downward. So... Well, only time will tell. We will see. Yeah. Next up, a new Pokemon Presents presentation will take place on Wednesday. This is coming from VGC. Not much to this story, except the new video presentation will begin at 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern um, on August 3rd and promises updates on Pokemon apps and games, including Scarlet and Violet. Uh, And Scarlet and Violet will be released worldwide on November 18th, 2022. Yeah, I threw this in here. I just wanted to see your thoughts on it, A, and B, if you think there's going to be anything additional announced that we can expect, or you think it's purely just for what we just said. Um... Yeah, I think they might show off DLC for Legends Arceus. Uh, I think that would make sense. I think, I mean, there's still a lot about Scarlet and Violet that we don't know, Mm -hmm. to be honest. So there's going to be a lot shown off, I think. A lot of information is going to be released. A lot of stuff's already been leaked for Scarlet and Violet. Um, There's people that are playing the beta that are just leaking everything. So we know a decent amount uh, what this game's going to have to offer. Apparently, there's going to be... Brand new typings for the gyms that we haven't seen before. Uh, the gyms are going to be able to be played in any order. Mm. Uh, there's going to mm. be other things to do, like going to school and taking tests and stuff like that, not just doing gyms. Co-op. The Elite Four. Yeah, there's co-op. The Elite Four is apparently like different as well with the different um, different typings that have never been done before in the Elite Four. So there's some cool stuff. Uh, I'm excited. And uh, we'll see what happens. I'm definitely going to get Scarlet. So, yeah. Is that the one with the girl? Professor uh, Girl Baby. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's one I will also be getting. Yeah. So look forward to that. That's tomorrow morning. It is tomorrow morning. And I have a meeting at ten o'clock, so Well this is this, this is on at nine. I know. I don't have to prepare. 
Uh, next up, AEW Fight Forever is up for pre-order on Amazon for $59.99. If you didn't know, uh, we're big fans of wrestling. All Elite Wrestling is the biggest competitor for the WWE right now. And they are about to launch their first video game called Fight Forever. And we finally got a listing. We haven't really heard much about this game. We've seen a couple clips. Every time we see it, it looks different. The graphics look different. The engine looks different. We're finally seeing some new substantial you know, evidence that it's actually coming out this year, as they have said. Mm-hmm. So here's a little bit from the listing on Amazon. There are some typos, which is very weird. I feel like this was not supposed to go up yet, and it kind of leaked. So AEW Fight Forever combines that nostalgic arcade wrestler feel with innovative all-elite wrestling finishers and tandem offensive moves. Online co-op wrestling is going completely next level in Fight Forever with tag team matches that feature sequences of team maneuvers performed with simple commands. A deep career mode, wrestler customization, signature AEW arenas, uh, multiple match types and more match types than you can count. <laughs> so like they're like repeating themselves there, um, including some good old fashioned unsanctioned fun. All the way uh, combines nostalgic arcade wrestling feel with innovative all elite wrestling finishers and offensive moves. Talent roster combines the biggest legends to enter the ring, plus brand new high flying AEW stars. Single tag team, three way, four way ladder, casino battle royale, falls count anywhere, unsanctioned lights out, exploding barbed wire death. And online co-op multiplayer matches, online co-op multiplayer, tag team matches feature a sequence of team maneuvers performed with simple commands, and some screenshots from the game have leaked as well. So I included that. I don't know if they're up on the screen or not, but they are there. All right, I just have the listing up. That's fine. There's some there's some screenshots that leaked from the game that show. I'll talk about that real quick. Um we see Hangman Adam Page slamming John Moxley on a ladder. We see Kenny Omega pinning what looks like uh, John Moxley. We have Kenny Omega hitting a knee on Chris Jericho. We have John Moxley hitting Kenny Omega with the paradigm shift. And then we see, I think, Thunder Rosa spraying Abaddon with a fire extinguisher and yuka sakazaki or whatever her name is is on the ground so these are some characters that i did not expect to see i did not think abaddon would be in the game she's not really featured on AEW tv much um same with yuka but the cool thing is uh you know that's telling me the roster is a little more expanded than i thought i thought this game was going to have a smaller roster uh, especially because it's been in development for a couple years now i thought maybe everything was going to be a little outdated but we're seeing some newer stuff so that's good uh, also, 60 weapons are apparently confirmed for the game. So mm. I don't know what that means or what that entails, but there you have it. I'm excited for this game. I'm going to suck it off. I'm going to play it. All right. All right. Before we move on to our main topics for the day, which we have two of, we got to hit you with a little ad, ladies and gents. An ad for W Energy. I'm drinking it right here in this bottle. So if you didn't know, W was formulated to give you focus and energy with no jitters or crashes. Their formula contains vitamins, amino acids, and nootropics, including the patented Neurofactor. There's no calories, there's no sugar, there's no artificial colors, there's no fillers. None of the bad stuff is in this drink. It's just the good stuff. Uh, your current energy drink may cost you anywhere from 2 to $3 per can. Ladies and gentlemen, W costs $1 per drink. You get the powder, you pour the powder in your drink, you shake it up with some water, and bada bing, bada boom, you have W Energy. So if you find it hard to work or study, just use code SLICK to save on W. That's right. If you use code SLICK, you'll save 10% off your order at W.GG. That's code SLICK. And the 10% you save goes into our wallets so we can support this YouTube channel. So uh, there's Josh with a nice, what is that, Dragonade? No, Galaxy yeah, Grenade. Galaxy Grenade. Uh, which is slick, and I drink Dub Sludge. So check out those two flavors. Um, we're going to have a Haptic Intel branded bottle coming soon. Uh, official Dubby sponsor. That's not true. Um, <laughs> but if you support us by buying W.GG, who knows? It could slick, be true. Who knows? So go on over there, use code slick. Tell them Haptic Intel sent you. All right. Let's do this, Josh. Main topics for today. Let's do it. Would you like me to take this first one and you can then take the second one? Yeah, let's do that. Let's let's do this. All right, so this is the big one. This is the one that this whole podcast was based around today. Dead Island 2 is coming back. 
a re-reveal of the game is planned for quarter four of 2022, which is soon. Very soon. This is coming from Tom Henderson, who's a notorious leaker, notorious insider. And for this one, he's writing on try hard guides. Yeah. Wasabi Wasabi says I'm pick up some W. Good shit. Good shit. W.gg. Use code slick. All right, so Tom Henderson said, sources with knowledge of the plan surrounding Dead Island 2 have said the game is likely to be re-revealed later this year, although an exact reveal date of Dead Island 2 was not provided. When was it originally announced? Dude, 2017? I feel like, yeah, like I feel like it was a long time ago, dude. Original, not release date, original announcement. Original announce. Deadline 2 first announced in 2... <laughs> what is it? I want you to guess. 2012. No, a little bit after that. Because the original game came out in 2011. The first one came out in 2011. Oh, I did not know that. 2014. Yes. That was when it, Dead Island 2 was first revealed? Yes, that's when that first reveal trailer came out. It was 2014. We're literally almost 10 years. No, oh, 8 years. Well, yeah. No, I just, I'm just saying. like it's Yeah, but who knows? By the time it comes out, it might be a fucking decade. Anyway, right. continue. I'm sorry. 2014! Yeah. Um, the same source that is telling Tom Anderson that it's coming back is saying the Game Awards... Sounds like a good place for it to be coming back. It would make a lot of sense, they were quoted as saying. Yeah. Uh, Tom also Wait, said... That's, it's that's Tom Henderson's source? I'm sorry. His source is saying that it's, okay. it would make sense for the Game Awards, yeah. Uh, got it. Excuse it's me. understood that the next installment will have a big focus on cooperative play with several play sessions at Dam Buster focusing on the feature. What is that? I don't know. What's Dam Buster? In addition, it's also been suggested that the cast... Is completely new with five to six new characters coming to the game. What do you got for Dam Buster? I have no idea. Okay. I, I'm 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 getting. I'll move on Dam Buster is a game studio located in the heart of Nottingham. Is that where oh, they're doing yes. testing? Yes. Several play sessions at Dam Buster. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Focusing that's what it means. That's what it okay. means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom goes on to say, since my original report on my YouTube channel, several new sources have since reached out to back the claims that the game is in a decent state of development. One source who had played the game said that it's probably my most anticipated game after playing it. Yeah. Sources had also backed the report that Dead Island 2 takes place across several locations, including Hollywood and San Francisco. <laughs> Looks like this is Wasabi Wasabi's most anticipated game, too. They say, I can't believe it. I can't wait to see what they've done with the game. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, continue. That's good to hear. I mean, it's shape, it sounds like it's shaping up quite well. Yeah. Did you, uh, pl did you play the original Dead Island? I did not. I tried it. I did not beat it. Yeah, I played it for a little bit. Was there... I, I don't remember because it's been so long. Was there co-op in the original Dead Island? I don't or know. No? Because what... You know what I think about when I think about the original Dead Island? Is okay. that original trailer? Right, the the goat, dude. The, one not, of the, not the goat simulator trailer. No, 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 it no, was no. It, the goat. One of the greatest video game trailers of all time. Right, still to this day. Yeah, you can co-op on um that island. Okay, I think for some reason I remember playing a little bit of it with Brandon. Our I also Brandon. played it. I also played it with Brandon. Yeah, but anyway, I, when, I his think, house. when I think about the OG Dead Island, I think about the original trailer and how good it was. Which the game never reached that level, ever. No. Apparently, the servers are still up, too, according to Wasabi. So Interesting. Anyway, continue. Following this original report, Deep Silver and parent company Embrace Group had said in a financial call that they at least expect the, released, the release to be next financial year. As the comments were made before the end of that fiscal year, it would imply that Dead Island 2 is scheduled to release by March 31st, 2023. Right. Okay. Plans for what the Dead Island 2 re-reveal will be is unclear, but hopefully the team decides to poke a bit of fun back at the Goat Simulator uh, devs, Coffee Stain Studios, following the debut trailer of Goat Simulator 3 at Summer yeah. Games Fest. You know what would be a, a big dick move, dude? What's that? 
is if they literally have the same trailer for part mm-hmm. of it, and then they either intersperse with new locations, the new characters, whatever it is, but somehow incorporate that original, the Dead Island 2 trailer, you know, with the jogger, and then everything goes crazy, right. and he's listening to the music. That's a pretty iconic trailer, too, in and of itself. Now, infamous more than famous, if you will. Right. But um, that would be that would be really cool. They have... So, now, since this game's been in purgatory, basically, I've been down on the fact that it even still exists. But right. I, I gotta tell you... The more I hear about it, the more people make fun of it, the more I want the game to be slick. Because right. the other thing here is, too, is they have a real opportunity because Dying Light 2 was not it. Was not your cup of tea? No, I, I love the original Dying Light, but Dying Light 2, they faltered a lot. And I know they've updated it and there was things, but they, I mean, literally the selling point of that game to me is the co-op. And the co-op right. fucking broke your game. Right. Which is the only other person I was going to play the game with. And then you couldn't play the game. Yeah, I couldn't play the game for like two weeks. And then you never played it. And I was done at that point. And I am done with that game. That game had so many fucking issues. So what I'm saying is that they have a real opportunity here, if it's good, to come out, hit the ground running, and be the co-op zombie game that we need. Dying Light 2, for all intents and purposes, failed, right? Right. Um, the Left 4 Dead clone, what was it called? The Turtle Rock game? Back for Blood. Back for Blood, failed. So, let's go. I'm here for it, dude. Pick yourself up, be the underdog, have the comeback story, and knock it out we of the park. We all love it. We all love a comeback story. We do. All right, what's next here on the docket? Well, I, well anything else to add to that? No. I just oh. hope it's. I hope it can do well. I hope it yeah. comes out. I hope it does well. Uh, I hope it's as fun as all these people are saying. Yeah. Sounds like the co-op feature is getting sucked off. So I just have one last thing on this before we continue. D- the right. Dam Buster is Dam Buster Studio just play testing it or they're developing it? No, I don't think so. Well, maybe because Deep Silver. But Deep Silver doesn't exist anymore, do they? Because like, now they're all oh, pa- oh, they're part of Embracer. I know that. Yeah. Well, anyway, the reason I bring it up is because Dam Buster, the, I was looking at their website, they did, they developed Homefront. Oh, okay. The Revolution, which, not too great. Um, and they did some work on Crytek Engine, Rise, Son of Rome, Crisis, Crisis 2, Crisis 3. Graphically heavy games, man. Yeah. Um, now, it looks like they are support studios and all those, but Homefront the Revolution was the last game they uh, developed, it looked like. Quite frankly, says, why do I always catch the stream during the cock sucking? Who Who's sucking? We're not sucking cocks, are we? Whose cock are we sucking? Damn busters? We, we probably said, like, I'll suck, I'll suck a cock. I don't know. I say a lot of things. Anyway. Anyway. All right, let's, let's continue here. Yes. Sony says it believes Xbox owning Call of Duty, quote unquote, could influence users' console choice. Brett. Pause. No shit. So this is all coming from uh, quotes, data, reports, stuff from the goings on of the the uh, Microsoft uh, Activision stuff, the right. merger stuff. Mainly coming out of Brazil, I think, looking into this. They're regulatory bodies. Yeah. Um, so let's hop into it. According to the company's official response to questions from Brazil's regulatory body, which is studying the uh, Microsoft Activision deal for approval, Sony calls Call of Duty, quote, an essential game, a blockbuster, a triple A type game that has no rival, end quote. Okay. As of right now, yeah. Sure. I don't know how much longer that's going to be true, but sure. Right. Then they continue, quote, according to a 2019 study, the importance of Call of Duty to entertainment in general is indescribable. The brand was the only video game IP to break into the top 10 of all entertainment brands among fans, joining powerhouses such as Star Wars, 
Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, and Lord of the Rings. End quote. Mm. There's no denying that. Sure. Quote. It's a it notable is, name. It is synonymous with first-person shooter games and essentially defines the category. This is also demonstrated by player engagement on social media, where Call of Duty has over 24 million followers on Facebook versus 7 million for Battlefield and over 12 million followers on Instagram versus 2 million for Battlefield. End quote. Yeah. Call so of Duty I, just has the cool factor. This is now, mind you, these are all quotes coming from PlayStation. OK, from right. Sony and all this. I'm just trying to paint a picture. They continue, quote, even in weaker years like 2021, which we talked about earlier in the show, Call of Duty still managed to outperform most other games by a considerable margin. Call of Duty Vanguard, for example, was widely regarded as weaker than previous year's titles, but was still one of the best-selling games of 2021. In other words, even in a bad year, players remain loyal to the brand and continue to buy the game, end quote. So, Brett, do you agree with Sony's claim here? And if so, do you really think it's going to impact the console market that significantly? That, even considering, it, even if, if uh, Xbox keeps Call of Duty multi-platform, which I has, see no reason for them not to. Right. Yeah, because they would sell more units by keeping it multi-platform. Right. Um, yeah, I think that they're right. I think PlayStation's right here. Everything they're saying here makes sense. They're, there's not a wrong thing in any of the things you just said. I'm reading it now. It, it all makes sense. My problem is I don't know if it's going to influence a user's console choice. But then I think about it, and Sony has had this exclusivity deal with Call of Duty for the last couple of years, right. which isn't quite owning the whole brand, but you have access to certain content. You know, I can see that kind of stuff happening here uh, with Xbox, and maybe that could influence them. I don't know if them owning it by itself is enough to influence users to, to buy you know, to buy it on Xbox versus buying it on PlayStation. Um, but they're they're not wrong. I think that it certainly could. And I also think there's other factors, too, in, in which console someone chooses to buy. This Xbox Activision deal is not just Call of Duty. You know, it's huge. It's Blizzard. It's all of those Blizzard games. It's all of those Activision IPs. So I think there's a lot more to it than that. But I don't know. This isn't a non-story. I just feel like it's like a no shit type of thing where it's like, duh. Well, uh, first of all, I think you're dense if you believe that Xbox is going to take Call of Duty off of other platforms. Right. There's no way that they're going to do that. That's I mean, money on the table. Yeah. PlayStation said it themselves. It's the best selling, one of the best selling franchises out there. Right. So first of all, they're not going to do that. Even if they shift exclusivity deals right like playstation has right now with getting content early whatever that deal might look like which xbox again is going to honor through I, th I guess it's through 2023 with playstation has that deal right xbox right. already said they're going to honor that so even if you switch that back <clears throat> right uh, what i find interesting in all of this stuff that sony states with this regulatory stuff that came out all of this data they point to right they do not point to data about console exclusivity with Call of Duty impacting actual console sales. Mm. They present all of this other data, but your main argument, right, behind you wanting this not to happen, right? Clearly, that's why they don't they don't want this deal to happen, and they were trying to, you know, shift these regulatory bodies' opinions away from it. You present all this data. For the contrary, yet you don't actually present any data on the very point in which you're arguing. Mm. And I find that very telling. So m my opinion to PlayStation is that it's going to impact your bottom line because you're not going to get Activision money for exclusivity. But what it's not going to impact is console sales. No right. way it's going to happen because you're still going to be able to play it on PlayStation. So people that bought a PS5 for their Call of Duty box this go around... Guess what? They're not going to fucking switch back and forth because of this small thing. And the other part of it, right. too, which we talked about earlier, is that Call of Duty is not... They're losing steam. It's not as much of a powerhouse as it used to be. And you can cite every 2019 study that you want to. We live in a different world now. Right. And again, this upcoming Modern Warfare 2 release is not going to be a good, good barometer because Modern Warfare is your most popular franchise within Call of Duty. Right. Vanguard right. would have been a better barometer there. Right. So we'll see moving forward, but I don't really think that this, I, th I think like you said, this is essentially a non-story. 
Yeah, I think it's a little ridiculous. And on top of that, I think the, the what it really comes down to is, you know, gamers are going to go where their friends are. And right. that's the bottom line. If your friends are playing on PlayStation, unfortunately, you're going to be playing on PlayStation. If your friends are playing on Xbox, unfortunately, you're going to be playing on Xbox. You don't really have a choice. It's not quite what you want to buy necessarily sometimes. It's what the group wants to buy. And I don't know if Xbox owning Call of Duty is going to make everyone go, yo, let's all buy Xboxes. Like, I don't no. know if that's the case. The general gamer doesn't know what the fuck is going on. Right. If you could still buy Call of Duty on Xbox... Or I'm sorry, if you could still buy Call of Duty on PlayStation, they don't fucking know that it's yeah. owned by by Xbox now, you know? I would argue mm, 70 to 80% of Call of Duty's player base are normies. Right. That don't know what the fuck is going on. They don't care. Right. They don't care. They might tangentially know that Xbox bought Activision. I would guarantee that a lot of those people don't even fucking know that Call of Duty is published by Activision. Right. Right. Like, so that that is it, this just seems like Sony's lawyers and their marketing teams getting scared that they're going to lose exclusivity money from Activision. Right. Rather than it actually being a point of contention against Xbox buying Activision. Right. That's it. What a mess. It is a mess. As Wasabi says, no way that could happen to COD. Quote him. Wasabi knows the fucking facts. Wasabi knows best. That's right. All, All right. right. Indie Intel, Brett, hit me with it. Indie Intel. This is a segment where we take a smaller indie game, boost it up, suck it off, and give it some life. This week, we're looking at a game that is a little different. It's developed inside of Dreams, which is a uh, game itself. So it's a game within a game. And this one is Silent Hills. And I'm not talking about PT. I'm talking about an actual version interpretation of what Silent Hills could have been. So, as spotted by PlayStation Lifestyle. Why does it say opens in new tab? Huh? That's so weird. The copy's all fucked. Um, by the way, this has come from Games Radar. Anne Marie Osler is the one that found this and, and wrote a story about it. So shout out to Anne Marie. Um, as spotted by PlayStation Lifestyle, Dr. Jones 20 shared their version of Silent Hills on the PlayStation subreddit. Quote, Silent Hills getting canceled was disappointing, so I felt compelled to make it, says the user. They began working on the project in 2019 and recently showed off the game's impressive graphical overhaul in a side by side comparison video. And it is very impressive, where, like where they started and where they are now. It's also impressive just seeing what you can actually do inside of Dreams. So, uh, quote, based on PT Silent Hills is a vision of how the game could have been. Domestic homicides are soaring in the town of Silent Hill, and the local police is overwhelmed, reads the game's description. Jeffrey Harper, a cop from Brahms, is one of many sent to help the Silent Hill police. And if you're feeling brave, ladies and gentlemen, you can try out this fan-made Silent Hills for yourself. You'll find it in Dreams on both PS5 and PS4 by searching Silent Hills, parentheses, full game, and parentheses. <laughs> this isn't the only PT-inspired fan project. Dude, this is nuts. <clears throat> uh, someone also rebuilt the terrifying teaser PT demo using a leaked version of Halo Infinite's Forge mode. This is crazy. So both of these are pretty cool. If you haven't seen the Forge Mode thing, I'm sure Josh has it up right now. Um, but the actual Silent Hills game that is being developed by Dr. Jones 20 is also very cool. Their own version of what Silent Hills could have been. It's a full game, uh, you know, with its own story that they wrote. So very sweet. I'm definitely going to check that out. I do have dreams, so I'm going to download this, and give it a shot. I'm pretty mesmerized by this Halo Forge thing. I know that's not the main part of the story, right. but this is pretty crazy, actually. Have you watched this? Yeah, I did. That's why I included it in the copy. I was going to leave it out because it wasn't really related. But at the same time, dude, it's fucking awesome. No, this is pretty cool, actually. <laughs> like, I think Forge, Halo Infinite's Forge is actually going to be pretty sweet. Yeah. So. No, this is actually pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah interesting now and that'll do it yeah 
Wow. Okay. Cool. People are awesome. Yeah. That might be the first time I ever said that in my entire life. What? People are cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people are cool sometimes, dude. Yeah, people are cool sometimes. And speaking of being cool, listen, we're pretty cool. And if you're not subscribed to us, please do so. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where we're at right now. Let's do 590. Check. 591. Oh, okay. 590. We are so close to 600. Please, if you, uh, you know, if you like what you see, if you like what you hear, and if you like what you're watching, share this on your Twitter, on your Facebook, on your Instagram, on, you know, whatever you use, share it with your friends, send it in the group chat, tell them to subscribe. We're so close to 600 subscribers and literally anything, any kind of support helps keep us going. We now have two weekly podcasts, one on Tuesdays, one on Thursdays. Um, you know, the Thursdays ones being released audio only on podcast platforms. Uh, this one being live right here on YouTube and Twitch. So please support us any way you can consider subscribing. Um, Josh, this is episode 77. Yes. That's big. Is it? Yeah. Okay. What do we got coming on? What do we got going on here? Any uh, any plans coming soon? We're going to California. We're going to California. Ladies and gentlemen, East Coast boys, California. Is this your first time? Not your first time, right? California, no. Not your first time? No, not my first time. No. <clears throat> I've been to San Francisco in the past, but it's been... God. I don't know. It's been a long time. This is my first time going to California. My first time on the West Coast. Wow. My first time leaving the East Coast. Wow, really? Really? I didn't. Right. I didn't know that. Yep, I've been all up and down the East Coast. I've never been out of the country, you, and I've never oh, been to the Oh, wow, West. you've never been out of the country either. Nope. Wow. Yeah, man. Yeah. I'm excited. We're going to do some California content. We're going to do maybe a little vlog. I don't know. We're going to yeah. do something while we're out there. We have some exclusive t-shirts that are going to be gonna dropping. Be, we're going to be streaming live from Haptic's fucking Playboy Mansion at the top of the fucking Hollywood Hills. We're not going to be doing that, but that would be awesome. We have a nice place in California. We do. We I, want, nice I want everybody to know that we have a nice place. They're gonna see it. They're gonna see it. Yeah, we're gonna do. We're gonna do a. We're gonna do a, a MTV Cribs style uh, walkthrough of it. I don't know if the Airbnb owner would be happy of us showing that. Screw but... the Airbnb owner, dude. I'm fucking paying for it. I'm gonna do what I want. Okay. All right, that's fair enough. Yeah. Wasabi says I'm definitely gonna show you that to my friends. Y'all got a great vibe. Appreciate it. Thank dude. you. Thanks so much, Wasabi. That's what's up, man. Um. That's it. I don't have anything else for you. I know you're about to get your Steam Deck tomorrow, Josh. Dude, so I cannot wait. You're really hyped for your Steam Deck. I'm really hyped for my Steam Deck. I am. I'm very excited to get it in my hands and play it. Yeah. I've been. I bought a couple of more games that are being ready for to go for it. Yep. I'm gonna load it up with some some stuff, and mm -hmm. um, then I'm gonna be laying in my bed and I'm not gonna move. So that's awesome, dude, including rebuying, which I wasn't going to do because I was going to wait for it to come out to PlayStation four or five and then replay it for trophies. Right. But uh, I, I rebought Persona four golden on PC and I'm going to play it. Got to do what you got to do, man. And when I start playing that. It's all over. Yeah, you're going to be sucked in, dude. The first time. Just for a little context, the first time I played Persona 4 Golden, which was on my Vita, obviously, mm -hmm. ripped to Vita, um, I, the first time I sat down and played it, I played it for 10 hours straight. Wow. Impressive. I love that game. That is, That's impressive. But that was our number one, hours. that was our number one game of all time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So watch those videos if you haven't, they're on the channel. Us That's ranking right. our favorite video games, games of all time. But Yeah. Uh, I'm excited. I want to play it. I'm very excited as well to uh, play some games with you on the Steam Deck. So can't wait for tomorrow. I can't wait, uh, you know, for Thursday when we release our next episode of Hapticast Unscripted. Make sure you follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and all those good platforms. Get the audio version of this show plus our Thursday Unscripted episodes. And I think that's going to do it for episode 77, unless you have anything else you want to add. No, just... Uh... Again, Wasabi in the chat. Um, you get my Steam Deck soon, but I got to save up some money. Yeah, you can. I, I think they're at the point where they're kind of shipping them out pretty quickly at this point. Yeah. But if you want one by the end of the year, I would get a reservation. If you think you'll have enough money by the end of the year, um, I would click one of those reservations. 
um, which is five bucks to to reserve it, and then you'll get you don't have to pay it for the full thing, and then you'll get a notification when it's ready to go. So, yeah, and also worth mentioning, you don't have to reserve the most expensive unit. True. I personally got the middle one, the middle Same. unit. Uh, yeah. You could put a one terabyte SS or one terabyte SD card inside of it. You'll have enough space forever. So, right. or not forever, but you know, you get the point. You'll have enough space. But yeah, right. Yeah, so that'll do it for Hapticast episode number seventy-seven. Uh, thank you all for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. Until next time, suck us off. So, Josh, I'm going to need you to subscribe to the Give to. You sound like you're having a stroke. Listen, I need you to subscribe to Haptic Into. You want to run that by me one more time? Subscribe to Haptic Into. <laughs> one more time? If you don't subscribe to Haptic Into, I'm going to kill you. You sound like you have marshmallows in your mouth. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Morgan Freeman. <laughs>